Grayson Grunhafer joins us, 365 sports recruiting analyst, football analyst, and also co-host with Craig of the Bearcast and joins us on 365 Sports. Uh, Grayson, what was your reaction when you saw the uh, the T-shirts last, what was it, Thursday, about we pay players based on what Dave Aranda told us at Big 12 Media Days in Vegas? I mean, I think it just adds more confirmation to what we already knew. I, I also think it's one of those things that, I, I mean, I think you just lean into it, right? And that's kind of what I think Baylor is doing. And I really like that, and I can appreciate that. I mean, this was a program that um, – felt so far behind when it came to NIL and especially implementing NIL, um, not so much just the resources of it. Um, it took them time. And as we saw with Dave Aranda, he was very open and honest about it. And now I think you've seen and everyone has seen that they've turned a corner in that regard. Um, and now they're at a point where, hey, you know what? Let's just lean into it. Got all this momentum right now. Um, might as well continue to kind of build on that. And, and that's what they're doing. And uh, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I think it's a cool wrinkle that they added and uh, definitely adds to kind of the swagger and the momentum that I think the staff is trying to get back. This is a segment Grayson Grunhafer with uh, brought to you by Richard Carr Motors, Baylor Bear Hotline. Paul? Grayson, it's not just 2025 that's going well for Baylor. 2026 looks like it's it's rounding out to, to be a productive recruiting class as well. Tell us about the quarterback that they just got a commitment from. Yeah, a really nice addition uh, with Quinn Murphy uh, out of Argyle Liberty Christian. He was actually at Austin Regents his first two years of varsity football. And now he'll be moving up to a Liberty Christian this year to be coached by uh, Jason Witten um, there at that program. So that's going to be really, I think, fun to see. That's a very loaded team, and he's going to have the opportunity to put up a lot of stats. But uh, he becomes commit number three in the 2026 class, and they're now ranked, I think, I think last I looked, they're number 11, I think, in the 2026 class ranking uh, with him, Rylan Morris, and Davis 10, the two running backs out of Honey Grove and South Lake Carroll. Um, but as far as Quinn goes, you know, this is a really good quarterback, guys. And I, I think he's one of those guys that's very underrated uh, at the moment, especially for the kind of offer list that he has. I mean, you're, you got offers from Miami, Arkansas, Oklahoma State, Houston, Louisville, Michigan. Uh, NC State, Missouri, a lot of really good programs in there. And I think the most interesting thing for me when I kind of see that offer list is that, you know, he went and visited a lot of these schools. And he went and talked to the coaches there and camped at some of these schools and then was offered after that. So this wasn't just him getting offers based solely on film. Um, this was one of those things where – where I think for me, when I look at it and I go, okay, so what, what is, what does this offer list really mean? I think it means that it's a full on confirmation of kind of what they're building and what, what kind of he's working towards. And so I think I really like the offer list. I really like the stats and he's a guy that's put up some huge numbers, but I think people will push back on the competition level and things like that. So um, it's kind of one of those things where you look at the numbers and they might be deceiving a little bit, but I think in general, he's a really good quarterback with a lot of great attributes. And I think those are really shown by the fact that he has such an elite offer list. When will they name a starting quarterback? <laughs> I think your guess is probably as good as mine at this point. I mean, he's one of those, it's one of those things where, you know, you felt like they would probably name one within a couple weeks of fall camp starting because Dave Randa kind of mentioned that that was a possibility. Um, but I think now it, it just feels like you might as well just wait until the first week of the season and that first depth chart comes out because um, there's not really a huge advantage in doing it right now. And so it, it's become one of those situations where it could take a really long time. We could wake up one morning and they post, you know, some sort of video or graphic about it. It's just one of those things where um, I, I think it, it kind of is at a point now where there's really no point in naming it early. Um, so I could see them taking a little bit more time, and that will be really interesting to watch. So uh, I still think Daquan Finn is going to end up being the guy. Um, but, you know, this thing has continued to drag on for a while. Grayson, what do you think is the uh, the next phase in, in the 2026 class or or maybe 2025 that, uh, that you see coming? Oh, that's a good question because uh, I actually talked to Quinn Murphy for a while after he committed to Baylor, and he um, – he mentioned, you know, that he's really going after some of the guys in this in this 2026 class. And 
I felt like he made a really good, I, I think, comment just about the simple fact that, you know, they the entire 2026 class sees what the 2025 class is doing, um, but he wants to be better than that. And he wants to be a leader in the 2026 class, and he wants that class to really build off the 2025 one and be better. Uh, his exact quote was, they set the standard, and now we have to break that. There's no reason why we can't do that. And so uh, he's really set on that. I think there's a few guys in the class that um, would make a lot of sense uh, if Baylor could land, such as, you know, London Smith, who's right there in Waco, a wide receiver prospect. Mm -hmm. uh, Braden Robinson, who's at Red Oak. So he's teammates with Taz Williams. Um, those two guys make a lot of sense and would really continue to build on the momentum that Baylor has as those are two four-star receivers that could join a four-star quarterback and two four-star running backs, which would be uh, quite the start to a class if they were able to accomplish that. London Smith's an interesting note. You and I spoke about this, I think maybe even last week, about he's among the top players for the class of, what, 2026, but sometimes there are games played uh, when it comes to who is committed to whom and how they get rated. Uh, how good a player is he? Because his dad was a hell of a player, Rodney, too. I mean, I think he's a really good player, and he's a guy that's kind of, I, I think, in a lot of ways changed kind of the, the culture there at university. I, I think he's a really, really interesting prospect. He put up some really good numbers um, in a decent offense, but I wouldn't call it, you know, the best offense or, or anything along those lines. And he really stood out in that. And so uh, I think London's a, a great player. I don't quite understand why his ranking has gone down. I, I think, you know, maybe it's about, you know, new guys getting ranked and new guys standing out and less to do with, you know, him. Um, but it is an interesting one to definitely keep an eye on. But he's one that, you know, Baylor, I think, really needs to find a way to land him. Because once again, you know, game kids that have, you know, Baylor ties and are right in the area. Mm -hmm. um, Baylor hasn't done an amazing job with that. They've had a few here and there that they've been able to land. And Jackson Blackwell is the, the most recent one. Um, but I, I think he would be a really, really big one. They've been recruiting him really hard for a long time. Grayson, tell us about the uh, new podcast. Right. So inside Baylor Sports, uh, Colt Barber and I are going to be um, running that podcast it's every weekday uh, there will be a new podcast probably somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes um, our goal is we're going to have coaches players on we're going to have former players um, you know just kind of a, a variety of topics we're going to talk about every sport um, to some degree and and really kind of I, I think give people a, another perspective of kind of where Baylor sports is at and, and where it's going and I think it's nice because you know while it is attached to Baylor athletics as a whole we also have you know that Sikkim 365 component where you know Colt and I have been covering all these things so extensively um so I think we can add a, a very different opinion um to the podcast but I'm super excited about it because I, I think this merging of Baylor athletics and Sikkim 365 is going to do really really great things for the entire Baylor community and that's really that's the goal. Grayson, thank you very much. Uh, good luck with all the, the latest when it comes to commit. They got the, the quarterback. We mentioned that earlier in the week. Grayson Grunhafer, 365 Sports, with us on Fridays.